So if we did the Na2SO3, and we, we would know that Na is a plus 1, we know an oxygen is a minus 2, so then what we would do is we would go ahead and, and treat the SO3 by itself. And then that equals a minus 2 on your chart. So oxygen is a minus 6 total. So sulfur is going to be what on that example? 4. So there's a choice for sulfur, right, being a plus 6 or a plus 4. Any questions with that? Now, this, the next one, students are going to be confused on it. And, you know, I don't think ahead sometimes and say, you know, it should be on your list, uh, on, your, on your periodic table. It should be on there as um, all the charges or oxidation states should be there. But carbon is a little different. It can be quite unique and they have a couple listed actually there's you could probably list more for carbon so if you came up with something other than what was on the list you, you're probably right okay so um, on um, for example the the next one you'd have so CO C2O4 so anybody what'd you come up with for cobalt Two, and how did you how did you find cobalt as a two and not a three? What would you what would you look at? <coughs> oh, I looked at the ionic charge. For what one? For what? For, uh, the compound C two O four. Okay, so the polyatomic ion C two O four is a minus two, right? Okay. So then cobalt has to be a plus two. Questions on that? So if we were naming that, we'd name that cobalt 2 uh, oxalate. That would be the name of it. So tomorrow, if you're given that, you'd look up C2O4 minus 2, cobalt 2 oxalate. Okay? So cobalt is a plus 2. Oxygen, uh, that one's really hard. Minus 2. So if we would just treat just the polyatomic ion, that means oxygen's a minus eight, so what's the total charge for the two carbons going to have to be? Plus six. Is that the individual charge of each carbon? No. Yeah. So it has to be divided by two, right? So it's what? Three. three. So if you came up with a plus three and you looked at your chart and it said a two and a four, it could be a three. So if there's any case where the math shows it as whatever value, you need to go with that. If it's not on the chart, then you have to have faith in your, in your work. And if you can show me I made a mistake and set it up wrong, you can show me that or I can see that, then you know, go with what the, the data tells you, okay? what your charges show you. Any questions on that? Um, the next two, maybe we'll just go through the, uh, the answers. I'll just go through the answers real quick. Copper's a plus two, oxygen's a minus two, and chlorine's a plus seven. Does anybody want to see how I came up with plus seven? Yes, great. Okay. So, did every, anybody have a question on the, the plus two for copper? Nobody has a question on auction, I hope. So we put, pull ClO4 out. Um, sometimes when I do these, I don't think the way you're thinking, because I've done it, to, I should. You should be able to see those areas where you're like, uh, I don't get that. But just visiting with somebody this morning, they were thinking this too had something to do with the ClO4 and how that all figured in. But what you want to do is you want to write it just like it is um, 
on your polyatomic ion sheet, just one of them, and then set it to whatever the charge of one of them would be. So that'd be a minus one. So oxygen's a minus eight, so chlorine's going to be a plus seven. Because there's four of them. Oh, but there's two of them. For right, and so some of you are going, well, don't I have to use this two over here to find the chlorine? And, and just forget this subscript, because the only reason this subscript here, the two is behind the ClO4, is so it balances out the copper. That's a plus two. Because each, each ClO4 uh, ion on your polyatomic ion charts a minus one, right? So I have to have two of them to balance out the copper. But if I just want to find the individual oxidation state of the individual elements, then I'm not going to worry about this two. Okay, the Cl is going to be a plus seven here, as well as if we just had one of them listed. It's not going to change. Okay, it's going to still going to be that. So I, Again, I'm not going to show you how to come up with the minus 8, because all I'm doing is taking 4 times the minus 2 to get that. I'm going to do that on every single one of these. I'm going to multiply by a minus 2. So on this last one, it looks really, really complicated. And, um, we know that silicate by itself is a minus 2, right? So we have 3 of them. That's a minus 6. Nickel, we have two of those, so it has to add up to be a plus six, so what's the nickel's charge going to be? Plus three, right? Plus three, so nickel's a plus three. Okay, so then I'm just going to take this SiO3 out, and equal a minus two. So then oxygen is a minus Six, so what's silicon going to be? Plus four. Okay. You need more work on it? I'm, I'll give you more work today to do on it, more practice. Some, stu some students, if you're like my daughter, my daughter needs lots of practice, okay, to get things, to get things, um, she feels confident about herself being able to do the work. Uh, some students, they don't, they don't maybe need as much practice, even though they probably should do more practice to get it down better, but if you need more practice, I can give you, I can always give you more examples, okay, to do. So any thoughts or questions on that before we get on to something a little bit different? Okay, those other rules? So there's some other rules that uh, we're going to use later on, maybe not right now. The first rule would be one of those on page 232. If you have a, if you have a particular atom listed by itself and it's not bonded to something else, it's naturally going to have, have it, it's naturally not going to pick up any electrons, and it's not going to give up any electrons. So you have just an element on the periodic table listed out. Its oxidation state is zero. Okay, because it hasn't given up any electrons, and it hasn't gained any electrons uh, or shared any electrons. There's no sharing. There's no gain. No, there's, no, there's no loss. So they're, they're going to be zero. So like... Listed there is oxygen gas. Anytime we, we deal with oxygen gas, we're going to write O2 because it's like pairs of shoes in our closet. We go there, we have a right and left, always. We go to the drawer and we have pairs of socks that are rolled up. We always have two. Oxygen is one of those elements that if, it's, if there's a bunch of atoms floating around, they get together and they form what's called a diatomic molecule. So here, oxygen oxidation state is zero. Okay? Let's say I have a piece of iron metal sitting out on the table. 
What's its oxidation state? Zero. It hasn't gained or hasn't lost. Now, if we have Fe2O3, now it has lost electrons and has become, a, have an oxidation state. So, in this case, we'd say, well, oxygen's a, uh, oxygen's equal to a minus two, and so that makes iron A plus three. Okay? Why? Well, it gave up three electrons, and, and it formed a chemical reaction. We say it's, it's become oxidized. Anything that gives up electrons becomes charged, like rusting, iron rusting, that's oxidized, so. So any element listed by itself, if you have like nitrogen gas in the air, it's zero. Anything listed by itself is zero. Any questions on that? We probably won't use that on a test. Uh, we'll probably use it later on when we do chemical reactions next chapter. Okay? So thoughts or questions with that? Okay, good. If you need to write these rules down, I'm not writing these rules down specifically, but if that's something you need to write down, I'd like you to write it down. We gave you three yesterday. Yesterday we gave you fluorine's a minus one, oxygen's a minus two, and hydrogen's a plus one with a nonmetal, and it's a minus one with a metal. Those are rules that would be nice to know a little bit about. We have these things called binary molecular compounds. And that's going to be on the quiz tomorrow. So if I have CO2 on the quiz tomorrow, and I had to name it, how would you name it? What would be the name of CO2? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. Because it's two nonmetals hooked together, I use prefixes, right? All right, let, let's look at the rules on how we would determine oxidation states. Okay? Number two, it says the more electroneg... Uh, the more electronegative element in a binary compound is assigned a number equal to the negative charge it would be as an anion in an ionic compound. So on your periodic table, you have electronegativity. So let's just take a look at this one, for example. Okay? So you turn your periodic table over and you're looking at oxygen and you're looking at carbon. You find their electronegativities. Electronegativity for oxygen, um, OD is what? What is the electronegativity of oxygen? right hand number? 3.44. What's carbon? I'll pick on you again. So according to that statement, what should be, um, what should we assign carbon, or, which one should we assign the charge to? Oxygen or carbon? The anion charge to. Which one should we? Oxygen, right? Because it's more electronegative. What do we assign it? You assign it the Right. So what would that be? Negative two. So oxygen's a negative two. Okay? So then what what is carbon? Positive what? Four. Any questions with that? Usually, usually, I say always, usually the first one list is going to be positive on binary molecular. So let's, uh, let's look at an example uh, of where oxygen's not going to be the most... When is oxygen mo not the most electronegative? When it's paired with what? Fluorine. Because fluorine's always what? It's always a negative one, right? 
So we look at oxygen, it's 3.44. We look at fluorine, it's 3.98. So we need to assign fluorine's charge. Well, we already know it's a minus 1 because fluorine's always a minus 1. So what would be oxygen in this example? Positive 2. Is there a listing for it to be a positive 2? No. Okay, because it's very, very rare that it would be that. So they're not going to put every oxidation number as possible. Because a lot of these are very rare. It's only when <coughs> oxygen is paired with fluorine that it would be a positive 2. Any questions with that? Let me, let me give you a little time to practice uh, three or four of these. And they're just binary. You look at the electronegativity. If it's the highest one, you assign it what its charge would be if it's ionic compound. And then you just calculate what the next one's going to be. Okay? That's all you're going to do um, on these uh, few examples. Okay? So real quick, you're going to do CF4, SO2, P4O10, um, N205, PCL3. Okay. So what I want you to do is take a few minutes, and use that rule, look up the electronegativities, the one that's the highest becomes the negative charge that's listed there. And then the other one has to be positive to balance it out. All right, I'm going to go through the answers. Fluorine's higher electronegativity than carbon. So fluorine would be a minus 1. And then to balance out the minus 4 that it would have overall, carbon is going to be a plus 4. Sulfur and oxygen. Oxygen has a higher electronegativity. It has a total overall charge with two oxygens of minus four. So sulfur is going to be plus four. Good? Yes? You have to put the plus in front of it. If you put negative, you have to put plus. Okay, chlorine's a minus one, which is a minus three total. Okay, so on the down below, put minus three total. So phosphorus is a plus three. Okay, good. Phosphorus here is a different than a plus three. Oxygen's a minus two, which is a minus twenty then this overall charge is a plus 20. So I have four of them. We divide by four. So then we get a plus five out. So phosphorus is a plus five. Oxygen is a minus two. You got to like oxygen in all these examples because it makes things a lot easier. It's a higher electronegativity than, uh, than nitrogen. And so it's a minus 10. So we have, this has got to be a plus 10, but we divide by 2. So that means that nitrogen is equal to a plus 5. And oxygen, of course, is a minus 2. And, and most of these line up with uh, oxidation numbers on your chart. Most of them line up perfect. There's some of them do carbon. Now this one is the one that gives students problems because I said on all these the oxidation number was positive at the beginning. We always like to list positive and negative, okay? On oxidation numbers and charges when they're ionic. Ammonia is not that way. Does anybody have an idea why ammonia is written this way? Because we said if hydrogen, one of our rules said if hydrogen is bonded to non-metal, it takes on a positive charge, right? Positive one. But we could also say 
Which of the two have a higher electronegativity? Nitrogen definitely does. So it becomes the charge what's on the periodic table. And what is that charge of nitrogen? Negative 3. And then hydrogen is a plus 1. And that's written in a reverse order. Okay? Why? Anybody have an idea why? Yes? Uh, nitrogen has a higher electronegativity. Right. But why in this one is nitrogen uh, listed first, and it's the negative ion, and hydrogen is listed second? Yes? Hydrogen is always 1. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be a positive 1 with it, with the uh, with the non-metal. Right. But why don't I list it as H3N? I could do that. What do you know about ammonia and looking at it acidity? What do you know about ammonia? Maybe from past like biology or past classes where you guys studied acids and bases. What's that? It's a base. So if I write it like H3N, what would you assume that that compound would be? An acid. an acid. Is that an acid? No. So that's why we have exceptions to say, okay, we're going to write it ammonia as NH3 because if we don't, then people think that's an acid when name is an acid. Okay? All right. Um, I'm probably not going to have you practice these. I think we've done a lot of these. We, pro we won't be quizzed on these until we maybe do a little bit more practice than that. But uh, those are, uh, for the most part, the rules that you would use um, if you want um, to do some more practice. I will give those to you a little bit later, okay? The last thing I want to do, and, and this is for tomorrow after you're done with your quiz, um, I'm just going to show you how to find a formula mass. And then... I'm not going to give an assignment today. Um, I'm not going to have you do any of that. I'm just going to do it so that when we, we talk about it in the future, you've already seen an example like that. So, okay? Um, I'm going to uh, title this Finding a Molar Mass. Okay? So I'm going to write a simple compound up here. And then I'll show you how to find the molar mass of it. So I'm going to go COCl2. And what I want to do is I want to find out what one mole of this equals in grams. So does anybody have an idea how we do that? Yeah? You add up the two molar masses of the individual atoms. And then right. If you, like, for chlorine, you'd have to take it times two. Right. So, if you've done this in a, a lab activity, you had to do it before. So, I'm going to take cobalt. I have one of those. And I'm going to take it times its weight, uh, 58.93. And I'll just go to the nearest hundredth of a gram. And then I take the chlorine. And I've got two of those. And I take it times its weight. And then I get answers that I'll just add up. That's it. That's all I have to do. So, you get down to the quiz tomorrow, I'm going to have you do some of these. Okay? i got one more to show you. And you got to make sure you got to count atoms correctly. So this next example looks really complicated, but I need to do it so that you can know how to count atoms correctly. So this was an easy example. Okay, this would be a little bit more difficult. So, how many nitrogens do I have in that compound? Okay, three. Okay, how many hydrogens do I have? Seven or twelve? Twelve, good. 
Some people like to add these two numbers, but I have three ammonium ions, so that's a total of 12. So very good on that. Uh, make sure we're multiplying the subscript on the outside. So we have 12 of those. You will memorize some of these. You'll get so good that every time you do hydrogen, it's 1.01. .01. Every time you do nitrogen, it's 14.01. Every time you do oxygen. How many oxygens do we have? Four? It'll be 16. Okay? And then, phosphorus, we have one. And I think that's 30.97. So you get to where you do enough of these, and then you add them all up when you're done. So you'll do that after the quiz. I'll give you some examples in which to, to, uh, to do. and That's kind of the start of uh, what we need to do on Thursday. That's pretty easy to do.